Unit 1 English, in India, and the world. Structure 1.0 Objectives 1.1 Introduction 1.2 Language and Communication, Speech 1.3 Why do I want to communicate in English? 1.4 English as an international language 1.5 The future of English, English multilingualism I.5.1 English, Latin, and Sanskrit I.5.2 English in monolingual and multilingual contexts 1.6 Let us sum up 1.7 Further reading 1.8 Answers to check your progress 1.0 Objectives To think about how one learns to speak a language To find cut why we want to communicate in English To find out what it means to say English is a world language and To think about international languages and multilingualism 1.1 Introduction Why do we want to speak English? Many of us have studied this language for years at school. We can read English, and we can write at least some English. But we are not confident about speaking of this language. Why not? How can we begin to speak English, and speak it well? In this unit we will see that it is important to listen to a language and to read a few pages in it every day, to develop our speaking and writing skills. We shall think about why English is important to us. We shall also get some information about English as an international language. What is an international language? Who speaks it? We shall think about descriptions of speakers such as native speakers, second language speakers, multilinguals, and monolinguals. We shall see that there are many varieties of English in the world, but what matters for global communication is that we use as standard a variety of English as possible, and become as proficient in this variety as we can. Up speaking more than one language, if these languages are spoken in the home and in the neighborhood. We call this multilingualism. English A child speaks a language or languages much before, s, he starts going to school. To know a language, then, is first of all to be able to speak it as easily and naturally as a three-year-old child does. Later on, at school, the child will go on to read and write, as you and I do. But unless we can speak a language at will, we may feel that we do not really know the language. Since you are taking this course, you are probably saying to yourself, but I did not learn English as a child. What can I do now? Can I become a child again? No, but you can do some of the things a child does when, s, he learns language. The child listens before, s, he speaks. A baby may understand a few words at six months of age, but it has been listening ever since it was born, and even a little before that. The baby may not speak any words until it is nine months old. By the time it is three years old, though, it can speak at length. So your first strategy is to listen to the language you want to communicate in. Perhaps your friends and your family don't speak in English. Never mind. Since you are an adult, you can listen to the radio and watch television or films where people speak English. Don't worry if at first you don't understand very much of what you hear. If you listen to the same kind of program regularly such as the news or sports commentary or quiz programs you will soon begin to understand it better. Just as you must listen in order to be able to speak, you must read regularly and at length, to be able to speak or to write. Make it a habit to read an English newspaper every day. Try to read magazines and books in English. Make sure that the English in these books and magazines is written by writers who know their craft. A child learns language wherever it can, whenever it can, anyone who uses a language is a language teacher for the child. You too can pick up language, in this case English, if you actively look for opportunities to use it, use it to listen and read, and to speak and write, and learn whenever you can, from anyone who can speak to you, or anything you read. Practice makes perfect. 
You can also learn more about the language by consulting reference materials such as dictionaries, a thesaurus, and books about grammar and style. Doctor, your cough sounds illy look better today. Patient, it should. I practiced all night. L. 2. Check your progress point 1. In what order close a child learn these language skills, listening you, speaking, reading and writing. How can you help yourself te begin communicating in English? List three activities. Think and answer, how many languages do you speak, and how did you learn then one? Fill in the table below. A language I know when I learned it fluv, fro, and one backslash slash one zero one one one, I learned it. I. Two. Three. I agree slash I disagree slash I haven't thought about this. 1.3 Why do one want to communicate in English? But why do we want to communicate in English? Here are some possible reasons. Do you agree with them? Do the activity below. Do you have other reasons of your own? Add these reasons to the list. You may also rearrange the points in the list in an order of importance that you think is correct. You may give examples to support your answer. L people who know English can get better jobs. I want to speak to people from different parts of India who speak other languages than my own. Every important person I can think of knows English. I want to speak to people from all over the world. Most of them know some English. I need English to study further. I need English to go abroad. One like English. Do you have any other reasons? List them. The activity you just did must have helped you to think a little about why English is a language that so many people want to learn. English is in India today a symbol of people's aspirations for participation in national and international life, as one group of scholars put it. It has been called a window on the world, this was Jawaharlal Nehru's term for it. The opening up of the Indian economy coincided with an explosion in the demand for English in our country, because English is perceived to open up opportunities. 1.4 English as an international language English is now called a world language, an international language, or a global language. Where is it spoken? In England. Of course England is a part of the British Isles or the United Kingdom, the UK, and in the USA or the United States of America. We often think of these countries as powerful. It was said that the sun never set on the British Empire because it stretched so far from the east to the west, you see, that there was always some part of the empire where it was daylight. Beginning with the end of the Second World War, the UK began to give up its colonies, and the British Empire ceased to exist. But as the British Empire came to an end, the USA rose to the position of a world power. In this way, the political importance of the English language continued even after England, the country, ceased to be politically powerful. In the 19th century the British Empire consolidated the world position of English, creating a language on which the sun never sets. David Grad, LOL, The Future of English, 1997. Language is closely linked to political power. Kevin Finneran in Span, January 1990. The population of the USA has actually always had speakers of many different languages who went to the New World from various parts of Africa, Europe, South America, and Asia. But the melting pot culture of the USA has ensured that English has remained its predominant language. Bilingual education, especially in German, was common in 19th century America, but in the 20th century, a movement to emphasize English as the national language gained power, and bilingual education was discouraged. In 1906, the U.S. Congress passed a law, still in effect, making competence in English a requirement for citizenship. Data from the 1990 U.S. Census show that nearly 32 million people speak a language other than English at home, mainly Spanish. Sidney Greenbaum, Director of the Survey of English Usage Project. University College, London, 
in his afterword to South Asian English, Structure, Use, and Users, 1996. A Brazilian teacher of English says on the internet, British colonialism in the 19th century and American capitalism and technological progress in the 20th century were undoubtedly the main causes for the spread of English throughout the world. Other countries that speak mainly English, in addition to the UK and the USA, are Australia, Canada, and New Zealand and Ireland. But today the importance of English lies in the fact that it is spokery, used and taught in very many countries around the world, as a language used in addition to their own, other languages. Many or most of the former colonies of Britain chose to keep the English language after the British left. Take our own example. We first decided to let English continue in for at least 15 years after independence. As a language of modern knowledge, especially for science and technology, thus, a medium of instruction in higher education, and a library language. As a language of administration a common language for the various parts of this country, which have their own languages, and as a language of law. Then at the end of 15 years many parts of our country felt the need to let English continue in these roles indefinitely. English is now an associate official language of the country. 3. 4. 5. Check your progress too. WHV did an IA1 stay behind in India even after the English people left. Is the current official status of English in India? What are the main historical reasons for the spread of English in the world? But more important than the need for English within India has been its role in communication with other nations internationally. According to research by the British Council, English has official or special status, for example, within an educational system, in at least 75 countries in the world, with a total population of over 2 billion. What countries are these, apart from India? It's difficult to remember a list of 75 names, so let's see if we can find a better way to think of these countries. Let's think of our neighbors in South Asia, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Myanmar, and Nepal, although it was never part of the British Empire. Countries that were part of the British Empire, and now belong to the Commonwealth of Nations, that we too belong to, such as South Africa, English is one of the one-one official languages that are given equal status in South Africa, and other former British territories in East and West Africa. Former British colonies, or countries closely associated with the USA, such as Hong Kong, Singapore, Malaysia, Mauritius, and the Philippines. We've got 12 names so far. Would you like to have some more of the names of the 75 countries where English has a special status? Let's see if we can find a country for each letter of the English alphabet well, almost. We'll try not to repeat a country we've already named, unless it is unavoidable. Here is a list, from Australia to Zimbabwe. Australia. Kenya. Papua New Guinea. Uganda. Bahamas. Ghana. Lesotho. Rwanda. Vanuatu. Came. Rune. Hong Kong. Malawi. Sierra Leone. Zimbabwe. Dominica. India. Nigeria. Tanzania. 11. Activolve. Test yourself to see how many names of English-speaking countries you can remember. Find out where these countries are on the globe. Then make a map of the spread of English around the world, by coloring these areas. English. A third of people on the planet may be learning English in the early years of the 2-1st century, according to the report The Future English. However, the demand for English may well peak by 2050, because by then more people would have already learned this language in school. Arabic, Chinese, German, Hindi, and Spanish may also emerge as languages of the future. Why do we need an international language? 
An international language is appealing because it would improve communication, increase trade, ease travel, and perhaps promote global cooperation, said Kevin Finneran in 1990. More recently, Gradal says in his report, as more countries have been rendered open to global flows of finance, goods, knowledge, and culture, so the influence of English has spread. About a hundred years ago, some people tried to create an artificial language, Esperanto, that they thought could serve as an international language. But today it is English that is the language most often studied as a foreign language in the European Union, by 89% of school children. It is a medium of education in countries like Hong Kong and Malaysia, and it is the most studied foreign language in the People's Republic of China, Japan, South Korea, and Taiwan. 150 million Indian children in primary school, and 120 million of their Chinese counterparts, are learning English. English is likely to maintain its position for at least the next 20, if not 40, years. Today English is the main language of books, newspapers, airports, and air traffic control, international business and academic conferences, science, technology, diplomacy, sport, international competitions, pop music, and advertising. Over two-thirds of the world's scientists read in English. Three-quarters of the world's mail is written in English. Eighty percent of the world's electronically stored information is in English. Of the millions of users of the Internet, the majority communicate in English. Major International Domains of English from David Gradal L. Working Language of International Organizations and Conferences Scientific Publication International Banking, Economic Affairs, and Trade Advertising for Global Brands Audiovisual Cultural Products, e.g. Film, TV, Popular Music International Tourism Tertiary Education International Safety, e.g. Airs Peak, Seas Peak International Law As a Relay Language in Interpretation and Translation Technology Transfer 12 Internet Communication 85% of international organizations now use English as one of their working languages, it is the preferred language of the United Nations. English is now the international currency of science and technology. It was a language of science in the 17th century, which was a period of renaissance in British science. But after that, German became the dominant international language of science, until World War I subsequent to World War I, because of the growing role of the United States in science, English regained its place as the language of science. Science journals in many countries shifted from publishing in their language to publishing in English. In 1989, the Pasteur Institute of France announced that it would publish its famed International Medical Review only in English from then onwards, because too few people were reading it in French. Some disciplines have been more affected than others by the English language, physics is the most globalist and anglophone, followed by the pure sciences. English language book production occupies 28% of the world's share, over 60 countries produce books in English. We in India produce more books in English than we do in our other major languages. In 1997, for example, one-fifth of a total of 60,000 books published in 18 languages in India were in English. One-third of our publishers publish books in English, the remaining two-thirds publish in 21 other languages. Print runs are larger for English books in India, and so are sales to libraries. We export our books in English, too, to countries in Europe. When companies from four European countries France, Italy, Germany, and Switzerland formed a joint truck-making venture in 1977, they chose English as their working language because it puts us all at an equal disadvantage. Compare attitudes to English as a link language in the non-Hindi regions of our own country. When the Swiss company Brown Bovary and the Swedish company AC emerged in 1988, they made English the official company language. When Volkswagen set up a factory in Shanghai it found that there were not enough Germans and Chinese who knew each other's languages, 
but the German engineers and the Chinese managers were able to communicate in English. For non-English speakers everywhere, English has become the common tongue, says Robert McNeil in The Story of English, a series of television programs, NIS available in book form. From our scientific journals to snack food labels, English constantly impinges on the world consciousness, says Kevin Finneran, a former college English teacher and a science and technology policy consultant. English is the language of air traffic control and of ships navigating their way around the world. A single language for communication, with a fixed terminology, allows airplanes and ships to travel safely around the globe, spanning a variety of countries speaking very many different languages. But ironically, a study on air safety by MIT, published in 1990, blamed language and communication difficulties for a crash involving Avianca, the national Colombian airline. The Avianca liner was kept waiting for an hour and a half in the air corridor as one group of New York's Kennedy Terminal did not pass on to the second group the pilots report that he was low on fuel. According to a report by PTI on February 9, 1990, the air controllers later said they did nothing about it because the pilot had asked for priority landing facilities. He should have asked for emergency landing if he was really low on fuel, they said making it out that it was a case of breakdown in communication between a pilot whose mother tongue is Spanish and air controllers whose language is English. Fortunately, this is the only such case reported. TV programs are another force behind the spread of English. People around the world can view entertainment programs in English, produced with the latest technology. Pop songs and films in English contribute to an awareness of the language in Renani countries. 113. Computers and their programs were largely the invention of English-speaking countries. Most computers have English-based operating systems. Early computer systems were almost impossible to use for languages using non-Roman writing systems. But new interface designs now make it possible to have software more easily and rapidly customized for lesser-used languages. For example, there are Chinese versions of all major American computer operating programs such as Windows and Microsoft Word. Top 10 Languages in Tuesday Internet C slash O of all Internet users English I-N-E-S-E Spanish Japanese German French Slash C Portuguese Korean, Italian, Arabic, 2.6, Top 10 Languages, 81.8%, Rest of World Languages, 18.2%, World Total, 100.0. A survey by Nielsen ranked English at the top of the 10 languages most used in the Internet or the World Wide Web. The figures in the accompanying chart pertain to January 2007. Check your progress 3. 6. The story given below illustrates the use of English in one of E12 intimational domains of English listed by David Graddahl. Read the story and save which domain it illustrates. My friend and T were or, a two-month trip to 10 European country I.E.S. spoke only English, but managed to get along quite well. After visiting France, Tully and Gerd Nani reached Swiss flailed, well, into a store selling Swiss Alnub knives. The man behind the counter asked, may I help you? Do you speak English, Trey friend? Madam, he replied, Teal Hat was English. Which of the 12 international domains of English applies to the remarks below? English is likely to be used if a German sales manager conducts business in China. For the airlines of 157 nations, out of 168 in the world, English is the agreed international language of discourse. I, as for non-English speakers everywhere, English has become the common tongue. Give two examples to support this statement from your own experience. Two. From L scientific journals to knack food labels, English constantly impinges on the world consciousness.
Give one example of each, from your own experience. 1.5 The future of English, English. Multilingualism. 1.5.1 English, Latin, and Sanskrit. English is not the first international language in human history. There are two languages that are compared with it in terms of their political influence, and influence as vehicles of intellectual culture, these languages are Sanskrit, and Latin. It and may be ire you that in sen countries, a good command of English correlates with a good less L of education, backslash vihishin correlates with economic and political power correlations that once existed for Latin Lernino. College, London. Some scholars have asked, is English the Latin of the future? What do they mean by this? If we look at the history of Latin, we may perhaps see the future destiny of English, and this is a destiny of change. Languages necessarily change, as though by laws of nature, from one period to another. You may know that spoken Sanskrit changed over hundreds of years, and that it is the ancestor of modern Indian languages such as Bangla, Hindi, and Marathi. A similar change happened to Latin. Latin was once widespread in Europe. This language of the Romans followed two different courses. The spoken language diverged from the standard norm in different ways in different regions, so that where there was once one language, Latin, we now have many Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and French, for example. In writing, however, the original form of the language was more or less preserved. This happened because of the efforts of learned men and grammarians. So also in the case of Sanskrit, we see the efforts of scholars to preserve the original language, guarding it again t change. Scholars of English, and particularly Englishmen, have wondered whether what happened to Latin will happen to the English language, whether after some 500 years or more, separate languages will develop in different parts of the world out of English, each with its own spelling, grammar, and literature. The English we know, they suggest, may end up being preserved among only a few learned men, as a precious and mysterious heritage. Indeed, Robert Birchall, an editor of the Oxford English Dictionary, once said that American English and British English were drifting apart so rapidly that within 200 years the two nations wouldn't be able to understand each other at all. This prediction now seems a little extreme to us. We must admit the fact that languages change, a language is not a fixed and homogeneous entity. But at the same time, there are social and educational pressures to maintain a standard variety of language that everybody can communicate in. Otherwise, there would be no point in all of us speaking the same language. We have said that spoken languages change over time, as though by laws of nature. But, as we shall see in another unit, we are now in the midst of a communications revolution that has made the world a global village. It may now be possible to guard spoken language against change, the way written language was preserved earlier, because we have the technology of audio and video recording and broadcasting. 1.5.2 English in monolingual colon and multilingual contexts. Languages do, nevertheless, vary from time to time and place to place. Even within England, there are many varieties of English, known as dialects. In India, for example, there are varieties of our own other languages, Dakani is a variety of Hindi-Urdu spoken in and around Hyderabad, Kannada spoken in the northern parts of Karnataka differs from the southern variety. And there are varieties of Tamil outside India, such as Singapore Tamil and Sri Lankan Tamil. Coming to English as an international language, the communities of speakers of English around the world are widely separated from one another, and many of these communities speak more languages than just English. So we may expect that English will change in a variety of ways. Certainly, there are many varieties of English spoken around the world. It should not now surprise you to learn that the many kinds of speakers of English in the world today have been described in many ways. One traditional way is to speak of native speakers and non-native speakers. The British, the Americans, the Australians, the New Zealanders, and the Irish are said to be native speakers of English, and the rest of us are all non-native speakers. But today there are many, 
many more non-native speakers of English than native speakers. Sometimes, these non-native varieties of English are humorously called Franglish, French English, Hinglish, Indian English, Chinglish, Chinese English, and so on. But many non-native speakers are very proficient in English. Joseph Conrad, a great writer in English, was a Pole who learned the language quite late in life, and he is the best known example of an extremely proficient second language user of English. In 1993, India-born author Salman Rushdie won the Booker Prize in Britain, and there are many other instances after that of international recognition for Indians writing I. and English. So some linguists have questioned this way of classifying the speakers of English around the world, as native and non-native speakers. They point out that it is the level of proficiency in English how well you know it, how accurately and fluently you use it that matters, and not. I where you learn the language, too. At what age you learn it, or three. Whether it is the only language you speak. These are actually the three factors that characterize non-native English, and differentiate it from native English. That is, non-native English is a term used to describe English learned in countries other than the UK, the USA, etc. For example you and I have learned, or are learning, English in India. In these countries, English is often learned after infancy, perhaps only when you begin school, and the person who speaks it usually also speaks at least one other language. Can you think of any Indian you know who speaks only English? Or who learned it as the very first of the languages they know? There may be some Indians like this, too, who call themselves native speakers of English. But studies of brain activation have shown that the brain reacts in the same way when you speak or listen to your 1st language or your second language, provided that you know both these languages quite well. So the point is that human beings can learn more than one language, and they can learn these languages equally well. Notice that we have now used one more way to describe how English is used around the world. Native speakers speak English as their 1st language, it is often their only language, and they learn it from birth. Those who learn English later, and use it extensively among themselves although they are not native speakers, are said to be second language speakers. This describes the situation of English in India. Then there are those who learn only a limited variety of the language for immediate purposes such as for tourism, for sports, and so on. These learners are said to be speaking English as a foreign language. We shall return to the topic of varieties of English, in particular the question of standard and non-standard varieties of English, and what variety a learner of English in India may find most suitable, in the next unit. Sanskrit and Latin have had a status comparable to that of English as an international language. True slash false. For historically, spoken varieties of language have naturally changed over time, but written varieties have been guarded against change by grammarians and teachers. True slash false. V non-native speakers can never be as good as native speakers of English. True slash false. Most speakers of English today are multilingual. They speak more than one language. True slash false. There are more native speakers of English than non-native speakers. True false. 10 give some terms used to describe the different kinds of English speakers in the world today. Which term would you prefer to be known by? I.L. Mention the three factors that have been argued to distinguish native from non-native English. 1.6 Let us sum up. To know a language is to speak it as naturally as a child does. We can do this if we listen to the language and read in it more than we speak and write in it. We all have our own reasons for wishing to learn English, it is the language of opportunity for education, for professional advancement, and for communication all over the world. English owes its status as an international language to the political and economic power of the UK and the USA. It has official or special status in at least 75 countries in the world, with a total population of over 2 billion. There are 11 major domains where English is used internationally, in international organizations and conferences, in scientific publication, 
in international banking, economic affairs, and trade, in advertising for global brands, in audiovisual cultural products such as film, TV, or popular music, in international tourism, in university or tertiary education, in navigation by air or sea, in international law, as an intermediary or relay language in interpretation and translation, and in technology transfer. English is not the first international language in human history. It has been compared with Latin and Sanskrit. But Latin and Sanskrit changed over a period of time into modern European and Indian languages. So linguists wonder if, in about 500 years, English will also develop into separate languages in different parts of the world, each with their own spelling, grammar, and literature. There are many varieties of English spoken around the world. Speakers of English in the world have been described in many ways, native speakers who speak English as their one language, and non-native speakers who are second language speakers, or speak English as a foreign language. But these distinctions are being questioned. What really matters for international communication may simply be a level of proficiency in a standard variety of English. Most speakers of English today are multilingual they speak more than one language. 1.7 Further Reading David Gradall, The Future of English, 1997 London, British Council An internet version of this book is also available on the British Council website. Kevin Finneran, The Future of English, reprinted in SPN, January 1990, pages 34 to 37. Robert J. Baumgartner, ed. South Asian English, Structure, Use, and Users, 1996. Delhi, Oxford University Press. Ramakant Agnihotri and Rajendra Singh, eds. 2007. English in India, a Dialoguer and Debate, Manuscript, Central Institute, and Indian Languages, Mysurg. 1.8 Answers to Check Your Progress. L in that order. Listening, Speaking, Reading and Writing. A CHLLD begins by listening, then begins to speak. Later, at school, eth child learns to read, and then to write. Any three of the following you can. I listen to the radio, tune into programs in English, too. Watch television or films where people speak English. 3. Listen to or watch the same kind of program regularly such as the news, or sports commentary, or quiz programs. 4. Read an English newspaper every day. Read magazines and books in English. Actively look for opportunities to use English, seek out people who know more English than you do, and speak with them, or ask them to help you with your reading or your writing. Learn more about the language by consulting reference materials such as dictionaries, a thesaurus, and books about grammar and style aid. Imitate news readers and sports commentators. Practice writing letters and filling out forms. Make it a habit to consult a dictionary to check the spelling, pronunciation, and usage of a word, and to check your English for accuracy with a grammar book. English continued as a language of knowledge, for higher education, especially in science and technology. It was a useful link language for the administration of a multilingual country. This was so especially in domains like law. To throw the English language out along with the English colonial administration would be like communication in throwing the baby out with the bathwater. English. English is now an associate official language of the country. The two countries where English is the principal language, the USA and the UK, are or have been politically very powerful. The British Empire dominated the globe in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, and so spread its language. As the empire waned, the U.S.A emerged as a dominant power, and English is the main language of the United States of America. English in International Tourism I. English in International Banking, Economic Affairs, and Trade 2. English in International Safety, e.g. Airs Peak, Seas Peak I. and 2. 
please give examples from your own experience. I false 2. True 3. True 4. True B false. 6. True 7. False. Native speakers and non-native speakers. 1. ST language speakers, second language speakers, and speakers of English as a foreign language. Proficient and not so proficient speakers of English. Please choose a term to describe yourself by. LL. The three factors that have been thought to distinguish native and non-native varieties of English are. I where, in which country, the language was learned, two. At what age it was learned, and three. Whether the speaker is monolingual or multilingual.